It's estimated that there are over 670 species of carnivorous plants in the world. Most people are familiar with the Venus flytrap, which uses jaw-like leaves and a snapping motion to capture its prey. But carnivorous plants come in all kinds of forms and use many different methods to capture their victims, such as trapping them in pitchers or ensnaring them in slimy tentacles. It's no surprise that these plants have captured the imagination of naturalists and amateur collectors alike. It's also no surprise that their bizarre nature has inspired all kinds of legends. One of the most popular legends concerns carnivorous trees that are said to be able to devour a human being. They've been rumored to live in Madagascar, Central America, and parts of Africa. It sounds like something out of a 1950s science fiction story, but could they actually exist? In 1874, a biologist named Dr. Emilius Fredlowski received a letter from a German explorer named Carl Litch. In the letter, Litch recalled how he had encountered a primitive tribe in Madagascar known as the Makoto. They had taken him deep into the jungle and led him to a strange-looking tree. He said it resembled an eight-foot-tall pineapple with six almost transparent tentacles at the top of it. The tentacles were around six feet long and incredibly, they seemed to be moving as if they were the tentacles of an animal. Below the tentacles, there were 12-foot-long leaves that tapered to a sharp point and were covered in strong thorny hooks. Near the bottom of the plant, there were a series of long, hairy tendrils that stretched in every direction. The plant emitted a sweet and seductive smell that made Lich feel drowsy. As he watched in amazement, the Mokoto brought forth a young woman and forced her to climb onto the tree. Near the top of the plant, there was a small pool of sweet fluid that she was compelled into drinking. After taking a sip, she immediately seemed to fall into a kind of seizure. Litch writes, The atrocious cannibal tree that had been so inert and dead came to sudden savage life. The slender delicate palpi with the fury of starved serpents quivered a moment over her head, then fastened upon her in sudden coils round and round her neck and arms. Then while her awful screams and yet more awful laughter rose wildly to be instantly strangled down again into a gurgling moan, the tendrils, one after another, like green serpents, with brutal energy and infernal rapidity, rose, retracted themselves, and wrapped her about in fold after fold, ever tightening with cruel swiftness and the savage tenacity of anacondas fastening upon their prey. It's a pretty amazing story, but unfortunately it seems to have been a complete lie. The Makoto tribe and Carl Litch never actually existed. The whole story was fabricated by Edmund Spencer for the New York world. Of course, this wasn't the only time that tales of a man-eating tree made the rounds. In 1887, author J.W. Buell published a book called Sea and Land, which gave an illustrated history of the flora and fauna of the earth. It included depictions of all kinds of plants and animals, many of which were shown as being vicious and dangerous. There's depictions of shark attacks, of boats being attacked by swordfish, and humans being killed by tigers and even elephants. But one illustration stands out above the rest. It seems to show a giant carnivorous plant, much like the Madagascar tree, using its tentacles to devour a human being. The description indicates that the plant can be found in Central America and parts of Africa. It's named the Yateveo tree, which is Spanish for, now I see you. Could this tree have possibly existed? To try and answer this question, we have to take a closer look at carnivorous plants. The tree from Madagascar and the Yetaveo seem to be an amalgamation of different kinds of carnivorous plants. They have sticky tentacles like sundews, liquid deposits like pitcher plants, and fast-moving leaves that capture prey like Venus flytraps. Carnivorous plants grow in areas like bogs, where the soil is lacking in essential nutrients such as nitrogen. Since they are unable to extract the nutrients they need from the soil, they have adapted ingenious ways to obtain those nutrients from the bodies of the victims they capture. The largest carnivorous plant that we know of is Nepenthes raja, a type of pitcher plant found in Borneo that can grow up to 16 inches tall. They usually trap insects, but they have also been known to trap reptiles and small mammals. However, these plants pose no threats to humans. I think that the stories of carnivorous trees were inspired by knowledge of real carnivorous plants and also by tales of other strange plants like the Titan arum, also known as the corpse flower. I mean, imagine coming across one of these if you didn't know what it was. They can grow over 9 feet tall and they smell like rotting flesh. They aren't carnivorous, but if you didn't know that, it wouldn't be hard to imagine them being capable of eating a person. Another plant, also known as a corpse flower, Rafflesia arnoli, could have also inspired tales of man-eating plants with its sinister appearance and smell of decaying flesh. 
so it's very likely that the descriptions of man-eating trees were just flights of fancy based on rudimentary knowledge of real plants. But could a giant carnivorous plant have existed at an earlier time in the Earth's history? The oldest known fossil of a carnivorous plant was found sealed in amber in Russia in 2014. The two small leaves are around 40 million years old and resemble the sticky revigula plants of today. It's impossible to tell what the rest of the plant looked like, but if it was anything like its modern counterpart, it probably didn't grow very big. Other carnivorous plant fossils have been found, but nothing that would indicate any sort of giant species. So for now, the man-eating tree will remain the stuff of legend. If you liked this video, please subscribe to Cryptic for more.